So here was your warm-up today. Water boiling and turning into a gas is actually a physical change. Because it's still water and nothing new has been created, water boiling and turning into a gas is just liquid water turning into water vapor. It's still water, so it's a physical change. Also, if somebody puts red dye on a t-shirt, this is also a physical change. Because it's still red dye and a t-shirt, um, you didn't create something brand new, you just put red dye on a t-shirt. So just as a quick review, remember that a physical change is a change of the physical properties or characteristics of a substance, where the substance might look different, but we haven't actually produced anything new. Um, like if you change the size of something or the shape of something, if you change the color or the texture, like if you rip up a piece of paper, it's still paper just ripped up, looks very different. Uh, water that melts, it's still H2O. It's either solid H2O or liquid H2O, but it's still water. And then the same thing is if you take a ball of yarn and if you were to knit it into a scarf. Well, it looks really different, but it's still yarn. You haven't actually produced anything new. Here are some, is a review of a chemical change. A chemical change is when you actually do produce a brand new substance. Like if you have paper and it gets burned, then it turns into ashes. Well, the ashes weren't there before, and so um, a chemical reaction has, changed, has occurred, and you know that because you produce a brand new substance. So burning paper turning to ash or burning wood turning to ashes. Um, if you have an apple that turns brown all of a sudden, uh, that apple um, basically started to decay and that brown stuff on the apple is a result of the atoms in the apple interacting with the atoms in the air and oxidizing and uh, that brown color wasn't there before. You didn't color it brown with a brown marker, the brown just appeared. Here are the signs of a chemical change. If you have a new odor, like when I melted the iron and sulfur together, there was a new smell. If there's a change in color all by itself, like if you cook an egg, the yolk of an egg turns from clear to white, not because you colored it white, but because it changed on its own. If bubbles get produced, uh, if you put two things together and all of a sudden you have these bubbles that form that weren't there before, that's a sign a chemical change happened. If the temperature changes all on its own, like if you hold a flame to a, a piece of wood and then the wood gets really, really hot because of the flame, then uh, that's a change in temperature and a chemical change has happened and the wood turns to ash. Also, if you get a solid from a liquid, it uh, has a name and it's called a precipitate. So if you have um, two liquids, you put them together and all of a sudden you get a solid, like if you let milk sit out and the milk starts getting chunky, that's called a precipitate and that's because the chemicals of the milk are actually starting to change. A lot of people might look at these and wonder, well, which one of these is a physical change and which is a chemical change? Well, let's say that we put red dye on a t-shirt. Well, this would be an example of a physical change, like we said on the warm-up, because it's a red dye and it just turned the shirt red. We still have a red shirt, or I'm sorry, we still have a t-shirt and we still have red dye. Well, take a look at this example, though. Let's say you have a red t-shirt and you put bleach on it. Yes, it's a color change, but this would be chemical because the bleach itself is clear and it turned the shirt white. Not that I had a white marker and I turned it white. I had something clear, so I got a color change that I did not have before. So these are some great examples of the difference between physical changes and chemical changes, and you're going to continue to do some reading on this today.